Welcome to the first episode of uh, what we call Between Two Ferns. Uh, it's definitely not an original title, uh, but the, the goal for us is to start doing portfolio reviews. And, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I want to make it really honest. So if you get feedback and uh, if your portfolio is chosen, uh, don't get offended because you might think otherwise without knowing uh, what goes into that. Uh, the, the goal is to help you get better. Uh, so yeah, to the, give very honest reviews of, uh, of the work that we're seeing and not sugarcoating or blowing smoke up people's asses. We're going to... Yeah, it will, it will be good in the end, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, all, it's all for the better. Um, so this episode is around 15 to 20 minutes. We'll try to time it. Uh, we are in our improvised studio in the basement of 500px HQ. And we just set it up right now, so it's a new experiment for us, a little bit dusty here. Um, and, you know, for the, uh, I guess for the portfolio reviews, uh, do you have any thoughts? Like how, you know, or we just like go dive in and see what happens? Yeah, we got a bunch of people who have written into us and told us that they're interested in having their portfolios reviewed. I think, let's just start at the top. Let's oh, start yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, I forgot to mention that we received uh, one single tweet uh, received 50 requests for portfolio review, so uh, more than enough uh, to choose from. So we actually chose six people. We'll see if we can go through through the whole list. Uh, we'll pick one or two photos and uh, we'll tear it apart or praise it if it's good. So uh, to start with, we have Matthew Perry. Uh, he was one of the first uh, people to actually post uh, the request for a portfolio review. And um, so as you can see uh, in his portfolio, he uh, shoots HDR and a mix of uh, babies and portraits. Uh, I, I think for us, it's going to be pretty interesting. I think it might be self-portrait of sorts. Uh, well, his request was for feedback. Was it was for feedback on HDR? What, what, on what post-processing, post yes. Processing. So, so for that, I think we're going to pick uh, his HDR shot and let me just like be well it's obvious he's got a real interest in experimenting with post processing here. yeah yeah so that's one of the shots uh, it's it's definitely an HDR shot uh, and uh, the first thing that I see is that it's been crazily corrected uh, both in exposure and in the uh, what's it called the dynamic range is just way, way, way overdone. Uh, so one of the things with HDR is that how you, how you want to use it. You want to use it for uh, limitations of the camera, uh, just to extend the dynamic range that your camera naturally has, or you just make it uh, look like uh, like a fairy tale. Uh, and I think what we see here is that uh, some parts that are uh, uh, should be bright but not white are actually not so some parts in the middle are just blown out which is mm. which is definitely like a first mistake is that you you try not to overblow your whites uh, it's yeah. interesting what you said about HDR is either to increase the dynamic the technical dynamic range of your camera or to give it like a fairy tale kind of super effect yeah um, but we look at the shot here and it's uh, it's fairly, not a fairy tale. It's not a fairy tale scene. It's it's a house in the suburbs with a pool. Does this need the fairy tale treatment? Does it? Does the content itself demand that this has the fairy tale treatment? I think he's gone over to that fairy tale side. He's gone beyond just increasing the technical limitations. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think it's uh, it's pretty unnecessary here. Uh, so uh, the, the so yeah, HDR. You know, try not to overdo this. Uh, and that's rule number one uh, and make it look natural so go like I don't know if it's one uh, made from one shot or many shots uh, look at the thumbnails you can really see how yeah it just like over yeah it just pops it's too, too much of toning uh, the other thing that I see uh, and we're a bit uh, uh, running out of time for this one is a little bit of cropping so for me the bottom part has too much space 
uh, and it doesn't add a lot to the shot like yeah it's a wide angle shot so mm -hmm. you can see that right so I would crop pretty considerably up until the waist in the middle just to make it a little yeah. tight uh, especially since it's a little tight on the top uh, so yeah I think you know. yeah I think in general HDR would have played well here a lot of commercial and architectural photographers uh, especially interior photographers use HDR as a way to balance yeah. Yeah. light and contrast but you always see that you never notice that they did it uh, and here we really noticed that you did it. I uh, just forgot uh, that we haven't introduced each other. <laughs> and I think we <laughs> and, and it's kind of like we just, you know, dived right in. Uh, so I'm Evgeny, co-founder and CPO of MLPX. Uh, this is Nuna with me. He's director of content. Um, he's in charge of making sure that only the best content gets on 500px Prime, our commercial licensing part. And I'm in charge of making sure that you photographers out there are all happy and use our service to the most. Uh, that being said, there is a huge thunderstorm outside uh, of uh, outside in Toronto right now, so it's raining like crazy, and we have no idea how it's gonna uh, <laughs> how, this audio is gonna how the audio is gonna sound. But we'll proceed. So uh, the the next guy that we got an application from is Adrian Murray. Uh, seems from his portfolio it's more balanced uh, he's shooting a lot of kids uh, hopefully it's his kids uh, and uh, there is some sense of style uh, in in his shots so I'll actually want to focus on uh, on one shot that uh, you know probably will there's be definitely good some example. consistency here with yeah there's definitely some consistency in uh, in the style and uh, uh, in uh, in approach, so I can see that he's using 135 mil lens for Canon, so that produces that dreamy results that look great on uh, just great results. You don't need to post process a lot after that. Uh, in this particular shot, so we're looking at uh, a kid shot, uh, uh, great photo overall. Um, though I, you know, I have comments like we're here to critique, obviously, and not to praise. So, bear with us. Uh, one of the obvious things that I see is uh, it's it's not tight enough. Like I can see the great light on the top right, uh, but you can obviously tighten that a little bit because the rest, uh, uh, the the left part of the shot is a little bit on the empty side. Um, so I would crop it pretty considerably on the left side and a little bit onto the bottom. Yeah, I wanted, so I'm looking at this shot and I'm wondering, what am I looking at? What is this kid doing? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and Adrian, like I, I'm a big fan of his stuff. I like his stuff, but to, you know, this shot in particular, uh, I'm, the kid is kind of looking off to the distance. I don't really know what he's doing. Why is he there? Why is this kid alone? Yeah, it seems like the pose is a little bit uh, uh, not just off. Like it's 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 an interesting pose in itself, but I think there could be almost like more action, uh, more in story, and story behind that. Yeah. yeah. So it feels. It looks like he dropped the kid off at the foot of the tree. Yeah. And then yeah. ran back to take the photo, and he's yeah. looking back, wondering, "Where did you go? Where, where, yeah. where where's Daddy?" And yeah. Um, but it's more of the uh, story question. Uh, technically, it's really good. I see that the, uh, the uh, highlights are not blown out. The blacks are uh, not 100% black, though like there's a heavy on vign vignetting. Uh, it's yeah. styled. It's yeah. a very consistent style. But I think if, if Adrian is looking for our feedback here, I would say yeah. work on building a story or some conceptual idea. Give this, and you, you know, maybe use composition uh, and not only directing your models, but using composition, like you said, making it tighter yeah. To, yeah. to build that story. But again, like I guess it's a question to you. If you, if you make it tighter, could you sell it on Prime? Uh, you know, it, we can or put it... Or do you want to leave we, it a little bit We can put space. it on Prime, but if, is, if the question is, is this sellable content? If I'm a, a buyer, commercial licensing buyer, looking for photos of kids, I want to be able to have some kind of story or some kind of... Uh, purpose or context to this photo mm -hmm. of the kid. So the kid, you know, is, is in make-believe land, he's pretending to be something, or he's sharing something, or he's playing, or he's got to be doing something that makes this photo work. So maybe like a little prop might help. Sure. Right. Okay. Yeah, if he's okay. playing with like a little train or a little airplane, um, or even like with, with a sibling or something, playing hide-and-seek. Yeah, actually an airplane might be really good, you know, something, uh, something like that. Yeah. Especially with the vintage clothing, and a lot of Adrian shot looked like 
sort of era or mm-hmm. era type clothing where he's got his kids in kind of old old style clothing we can really you know play with old style toys like old tin airplanes or, or something would be contextually yeah. relevant and, uh, and interesting I agree yeah um, so let's uh, well that's for that's all for Adrian yeah uh, let's move on uh, we have Martin Reich 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 uh, sorry Martin uh, my last name is pretty hard to pronounce as well um, so this portfolio is really interesting and uh, you know I picked it for uh, actually semi-randomly and then decided to keep it. Uh, this is, I, I almost see that as, as the uh, fashion slash a little bit of wedding photo shoot. Like there is a little bit nice uh, styled uh, photos here. Uh, but I actually want to pick this shot for, uh, for the review. Um, what do you think? You know, I'm, Martin's one of those photographers that... Oh, know, you know him? Well, no, like, well, I, oh, I know his portfolio. Oh. Okay. Um, and he's definitely got style, and he's, he's, he's there with sort of what, what's kind of hot and trending right now. He's mm-hmm. definitely hitting it mm-hmm. uh, on quite a few shots. And, and this photo in particular, what I really like here is, is this new, I don't know if it's new, but this new kind of phase where photographers are, are pushing back, are going way, way back, instead of you know, focusing on really close shots. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not afraid to get away from their subject and, and give their subject and I hate to keep using this word, but giving their subject Space. context, mm-hmm. um, and you get to see the size of the subject based on the environment that they're in, so you can really appreciate where they are. They're still the main focus, uh, but now you, you sort of have an idea. Um, yeah, I, I would say I agree with that, uh, and it's uh, really hard for me. I want to get as close as I get, and I like to crop really tightly, so just not to leave uh, crop to chance, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in this shot, I see the obvious flaw. It's completely black in the bottom right corner. It just uh, it doesn't even render on my screen, right? So it just doesn't exist. Uh, that for me, uh, even like I see that there is heavy filtering involved, so there's a really heavy shadows. Uh, but for me, that's still not not an excuse to. To produce something that you wouldn't be able to print because the input just like flow on that. Uh, that is one of the things that mm-hmm. I find really uh, uh, annoying for me here. Uh, the other part is that uh, the uh, I would say like the groom, I guess, in that uh, shot, I don't see his bottom part. I don't see his legs and stuff. And for me, he kind of like disappears in in the dress. Mm-hmm. So I would love for them to be slightly more angled so mm-hmm. that. You know, you can see both shapes, uh, or like both silhouettes, mm-hmm. almost. So, uh, whereas in here, they are almost uh, two people in one dress. <laughs> yeah. it, it almost feels like that. Well, and because they're so small, you yeah. need as much detail as you possibly can to, to make out what you're seeing. Because now I'm, here, I'm sitting here squinting. No, it, it's, it's heavily filtered. So, you know, I think there is, uh, judging by the camera, it's uh, 5D Mark III. Uh, a nice lens, probably 70 to 20 or 24 to 70 to 2.8. So it, uh, ISO is pretty low, 1250. So the the noise that we see is obviously an artistic noise added mm. later, right? So with all that, uh, he Martin removes details uh, specifically, right? Just for just for the artistic feel of the shot. Yeah, for me, like I. I... I really love the composition, um, and now that you bring up some of these points, I would love to see this processed in another way, maybe with some yeah. more natural colors and not pushing it so far. Um, and this looks like a really heavy kind of visco style film emulator yeah. Uh, yeah. filter, where maybe preserving some of those details and maybe even some of those natural colors would have really made this pop. Well, yeah, we don't know what the natural color is, but I feel it more uh, warm colors and with less noise and more details to that. So like more contemporary feel, I guess. Um, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, like you can see here, even like the highlights are pink uh, and the shadows are blue. This is a real kind of almost cross process. Um, yeah, it, it, it seems a little bit like a decent And the other stuff process, in this portfolio yeah. has a lot more natural color. Maybe that's why this one stuck out for you, is that... Um, sure, yeah, no, I think we have an extra minute, so... Uh, so if you yeah. scroll up, so this one, uh, there's one there that's really filtered, but then you go up here to this guy, like this in the guy, woods. Yeah, let's, let, let's open this guy. 
Uh, or even the one before. With... It's still a little bit processed, but I really like the composition here mm -hmm. and the blurry uh, front details. Uh, again, if I would change one thing, I'll crop a little bit from the top. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is more balanced shot for me. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I would crop a little bit to the left maybe so that uh, the, the person, uh, the, the key person there would be more centered. And if he is looking to the right, then I would leave more space on the right. Uh, I feel that would just have a natural flow to the photo. And the three barks and the barks would help that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I definitely like the lines here that yeah. he's working yeah. with. But there's more details here, right? So yeah. that, that, that yeah. we see. Uh, again, great work with the uh, highlights and shadows. It's all well balanced. Uh, that's what I like. It's gonna look great on print. Uh, again, 5D Mark III, so pretty, pretty good stuff. Yeah, I gotta say overall, you know, we're kind of picking things apart, but that's that's why we're here. That's what we're doing. We're kind of trying to find. Ah, that's find, fine. Find the yeah. fun, <laughs> but you know, these, these photos are are great in their own in their own right. And if, yeah. you know, you know, hindsight's always 2020. 20. It's easy for us to kind of pick these things apart. And hopefully, there's a lot no, to take away yeah. from this. That's the whole, uh, I think we should do my portfolio review with my photos and, uh, <laughs> you know, tear them apart. Um, so next guy, Andrew Vernon. Uh, he, so his portfolio is well balanced as well. So he shoots a lot of uh, long exposure shots uh, of skies and uh, water, uh, but a little bit of, uh, uh, a little bit of studio work. Uh, with some stills mm -hmm. and uh, I think what he asked for is uh, uh, so post-processing and technique um, so for that um, you know I think we might have time for two shots so let me pick one photo at random uh, actually well not random I like the shot I think mm -hmm. um, uh, this is the shot uh, tropical storm baby uh, shot on D eight hundred four seconds. Um, so, what do you think about the shot? You know, this the first impression I get right away is this would look great as a print. Yeah, this would look great as a print. It's, it's kind of cool that he caught kind of a flood uh, in a long exposure. It's it's super interesting. It's. Um, I wonder where he's standing <laughs> in that <laughs> shot <Yeah. laughs> because it seems pretty. That's pretty impressive. Uh, though you know, one thing that I see is that. Yes, you want to have four seconds for the water so that, or maybe even less, so mm -hmm. that you have the movement and you have the moving skies. So, you know, if you're not afraid of heavy Photoshop work, uh, Photoshop processing, maybe you could go for something like 60 or even 120 seconds for the skies. Uh, I don't know if you want to use ND or just process it separately. And l less for the water, so something like half a second so that you can really see the, uh, the tide moving and all the like white streaks of water that you get with mm -hmm. uh, uh, faster uh, exposure there. Uh, I think the colors look great, but I almost see that in black and white. I almost see that like it's really uh, almost like inverted black and white, uh, infrared black and white, where y you can really play on the contrast. Is it because of the green? Uh, it's that, that weird seafoam green? Yeah, the green is not uh, the best green I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I like, the, I like the reds, color. I like the, uh, definitely I like the yellow with black. Uh, I think it plays overall pretty well here. Uh, but I think, you know, there's some colors on the water, some colors on the skies, which are not adding a lot of uh, to it, right? Mm -hmm. So the, uh, those parts could be black and white easily and not uh, change the photo a lot. So let's dive into another one, actually. Uh, and I think we'll have to wrap up after that. Um, studio shot. Thoughts? Right away, as soon as I saw this, I thought, this is like a, a strobist exercise. Like a, you go on a website and it teaches you a trick, like a photo photography trick, um, and you and you they just go and do it. Yeah, you you go and do it. You execute it flawlessly, but there's really, I don't know. Like I I I, I don't feel that this is like unique. Um, it's cool, uh, and it's it's done technically flawlessly um, that, that's what I would argue is that there's not enough contrast so I can see the white in the back uh, it's not white it's 
uh, off white and it's pretty uh, a lot of gray. Mm. Um, I can see the uh, the line that connects the uh, I guess uh, the two. Yeah, so you see this the mirror, the edge of the mirror. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Um, so you know those things. You you've done I guess the tutorial pretty well, or like you um, come across it as your own. But in the end, it's like those little details. So I see little uh, either drops on the stems of the glasses that show me that you haven't done the Photoshop later after that, or like you were just doing that as an exercise and not really worrying about the quality. Um, I don't know, like I think I see a little bit of uh, uh, noise actually, either from post-processing, especially on the darker reds. Uh, and like overall, it feels that like you've done the job, but you, you've done, you went 90% and you didn't want to complete the other 10 to make it a striking shot. Uh, and again, like we've seen a lot of shots like this, but those 10% can make a uh, big difference, especially to the audience of Avenida PX. Yeah, I think if you're going to do a shot like this, it's really got to stand out. It's got to be... Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, since you have time, like it's not something that you have a moment, uh, like a landscape or the other shots that you have. Uh, but you really, you know, you, you have all the time in the world to, mm -hmm. to spend on that. Um, so uh, no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with that, uh, we are on the 20 minute mark. Uh, mm -hmm. With that, this is the, uh, you know, we'll have to wrap up. Uh, I think for the next one, we'll do a uh, few more. So mm -hmm. we'll talk more about how to make your uh, photos com more commercially viable, how to sell them on 500px Prime and what to expect uh, and how uh, to move your work for that next 10%. So, uh, you know, stay tuned for that and uh, we'll see you in our uh, dungeon. Yeah, it's great. It's great doing this. So I'm really looking forward to the next one. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Bye.